What's up, YouTube? It's your boy James to the O. I don't care what none of y'all say. That trial of the century, he did it. I don't care what none of y'all say. He did it. He went over to that ex-wife house of his, stabbed him up, stabbed her up. Friend came by, stabbed him up too. Took off a glove, left it, got in his Bronco, took off and gone. What I learned from that OJ story, yes, it's old, so well, I don't care. It came to me about it, so that's why I am putting this on YouTube. I asked, what you think of that case? You think he did it? I went, yeah, he did it. Yes, absolutely. No questions asked. Nothing to think about. A couple questions I want to ask you guys if you disagree. One, how did your blood, Nicole's blood, Goldman's blood, all three is inside of your vehicle. Justify that for me. And then the blood that was found in your house in socks had both the victim's blood on it. How do you justify that? I'm curious to know that. But then they talk about the gloves that he was wearing, the cut finger he had that he got in Chicago right after the killings. But there was no cut on the glove. So it was like, okay, well, he got a cut on his finger, but there's not a cut on the glove, so something's up. Otherwise, that cut would have been through that glove. Oh, yeah, he really has been done. But they already had enough DNA evidence to point him out, say he did it, and when he was on a highway speeding because he was considered a fugitive by LAPD when the warrant for his arrest came out for two counts of murder. One, they say he was caught in Orange County. They Some Orange County police officer recognized his vehicle, lured it in, chased him. They went on a high-speed chase. On the 405, he took it all away. He eventually surrendered. In custody the whole time without bail. So for the whole two years, his case from beginning to end, he's in custody, protective custody. What they found in that car was $8,000 cash, a fake mustache, fake goatee, fake beard, passport, and a, and a revolver fully loaded. Basically, he was going to kill himself, I guess. And what And what's intriguing to me is that Marsha Clark and Christopher Darden, the D, the prosecutors, they never presented that in trial. I understand that one. That demonstrates guilt by itself. Your passport, your gun, you about to commit suicide. Robert Kardashian reading this, reading this story, this letter that you written for him to read to the press, which indicated guilt and suicidal. It's like what? None of this was introduced in trial. None of it. Oh, okay. Whatever. They say when he was visited by someone while in custody. I guess it was a former football player, a friend. He was a pastor. He was like, "Come clean, OJ. What you do?" And then one of the bailiff, the jailer, heard him shout the words, "I didn't mean to do it." That's self-incrimination right there. Judge Ito was like, no, that's hearsay. That is inadmissible in court. What another bullet he dodged. Person who sold the knife to him three weeks prior to him actually using that knife. He told his story to somebody, one of the TV shows where they gave him like $13,000. Prosecutors never subpoenaed him. One female witnessed him speeding off, almost getting into an accident. Around Bundy and San Vicente, something like that, in Brentwood. She stole her story and got like $6,000. They didn't subpoena her either to testify. They let them two go. They left out too much that you kind of find hard to discredit. The main thing the defense discredit was DNA evidence collection and tampering possibility. And Detective Mark Furman, who 
was a racist and a liar. To me, the biggest thing of why he got off was simply because of that detective. They think he planted evidence. I'm not really sure if he planted evidence or not. But how do you go back to a crime scene three weeks later after you initially went and come to find out? Oh, we see new drops of blood here. No, 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 you didn't. You plant, you, I think they did this. When OJ was getting interrogated, I think when he gave his blood sample, they used that blood sample and probably sprinkled it and say, we found evidence. If I was OJ, I'd have never gave him a blood sample. Can we get, can we get a sample of your blood? Heck no, no. You ain't got no warrant. You ain't got nothing to justify that you could do this. And my answer would have been no. You ain't finna plant my blood at the scene and spot me there. No. And that's probably what the jurors were inflamed about. When they learned that. And here comes the detective. Have you ever used the N-word? Nope. You ain't used the N-word in 10 years? Nope. This is the most intriguing part to me. There was a female that had nothing to do with the trial. Nothing. She writes the letter to the defense. The prosecution still presenting this case, so the defense can't present it. When it was the defense turn, then they presented. When the prosecution rested his case, it was like, huh, we got I got three, four, five witnesses that said that Detective Mark Furman used the N-word on him. Nuh uh. Yeah. Robert Shapiro didn't like the simple fact that Johnny Cochran was pulling a race card. I think it was a great idea he pulled a race card. You got nine black jurors. You got a black defendant. You black. I'm talking about Cochran. And the police is bra and Rock Fern is bragging about beating up black people. We take them to the alley, beat them, kick the mess out of them. Da da da. You do what you told. And yeah, he said he used the word forty one times. The jurors only allowed to hear it twice, but not in a severe way though. It's just the whole idea of him using that word. That was enough right there. The other thirty nine times. They were like, that's it. Not guilty. Off top. He the reason why OJ got off. And that female that came in was like, well, if I had it my way, he said, if I had it my way, I would gather up all the black people and they would burn. And the other female came up and was like, he said, the only good black man is a dead black man. Well, I'm saying the edit version. They said the N word. I don't use that word. Yep, got me in custody. He looked at me. He told me. He said, I told you, we will get you. I was like, ooh. <laughs> no, they did not. They played them tapes, some jurors. Oh, that was all she wrote. And then he goes back on the stand. He pleading the fifth now. And the jury's not even there. If the jury would have been there, they'd have been more inflamed. Well, all the press conferences, the jury had to know. They had to know. Glove don't fit, you must have quit. Mm, the glove did fit when he did it. But whatever they did to that glove, it shrunk. Or however it went. But here's one here's one key point that wasn't acknowledged. When he he has arthritis and his family testified in court that it just about arthritis run our family. Especially OJ. When he did not take his arthritis medication, I think he was advised by Johnny Cochran not to do it. And his hands swelled up. Glove only fit at the halfway point. They got people over there trying to pull it and it, it was stuck. Do the other hand the same way, it was stuck. And he pointed to the jury like, see, it don't fit. So it wasn't me. That's a good strategy. I ain't mad at the defense. I think Johnny Cochran is the best lawyer Probably ever for that. Because <laughs> John Cocker knew he was done for. Rob Shapiro knew he was done for too. Yeah, I, OJ did that junk. And after his interviews, he confessed into the junk. He may be sugarcoating it, being around a bush around it about it. He may not say it to you straight. He did that junk. Who else could have done it? He hired somebody to do it. 
If he didn't do it, he has something to do with it. Either way, you're still guilty. Like, comment, share, subscribe to this video. Tell me what you think about that trial of the century case. Yeah, it's pretty old. I still want your opinion, though. Tell me what you think.